going on, everybody? We are back. Another week of Jake and I trying to get this right. Uh, Jake, how was your weekend? Uh, the weekend was good. DFS was less than good, but that's baseball. Yeah. Um, you know, I probably played a couple of slates, or mostly yesterday. I made I was making lineups on the golf course, or my lineup, and uh, that went about as well as you could expect. So. Um, the day was over before it started. Uh, yeah, that's, that's what happens. Don't, don't be like me. Don't be a degenerate and be making lineups. Just enjoy the golf when you're out golfing. Uh, it's okay to take a slate off every once in a while. Yeah, I, I probably wouldn't have been trying to, to jam in any lines on the golf course. Normally, um, I'm too busy being terrible at golf to, I don't want to be terrible at DFS and golf at the exact same time. So, uh, seven games tonight. Pitching is going to be really interesting. Hitting will be fun, uh, but we're going to have a lot to talk about, I think. You ready to get started? Yeah, let's do this. All righty. First game up, Phillies and Giants. Phillies, 4.4 run implied total. Same for the Giants. It's 50-50. Uh, Zach Eflin going for Philadelphia. Uh, Jeff Samarja going for San Francisco. I like Samarja a little bit here, particularly on FanDuel. I'm expecting him to be probably my third most owned pitcher uh, on FanDuel. I think he's fine again on DK. Um, I definitely don't want any part of Eflin. Uh, Samarja is going to be a guy in like this mid-tier quagmire of pitchers today. Nobody that I really, really like, which makes me think that Strasburg's ownership is going to be through the roof. Um, tell me where you land on Samarja. Yeah, so Samarja is a guy I'm definitely going to consider. I just want to see what the ownership's going to be like with him uh, once we get an idea of that later in the day because I think there's there's kind of two ways to go on DraftKings for pitcher today. It's take two of the mid-tier guys, um, the 8 and 9K guys like Samarja, Keichel, Hendricks, or you go up to Strasburg and then probably pay down at your second spot. Um, and Samarja, if... I end up with the the uh, two mid-tier guys. He'd certainly be a guy I would consider because the Phillies are bad against righties. Um, there just aren't a lot of pitching options on this slate. We know he's a pretty good pitcher, uh, can have big performances. Does the run total scare you for the Phillies here? Not really. Okay. Yeah, it, does, it doesn't really scare me either. I think he should be able to get his fair share of strikeouts. Um I, he, he's a solid play. I'm not crazy about it. If he's going to be super chalky, then I might change my tune a little bit. But right now, I think there will be a much chalkier pairing on DraftKings. So 8400 for Samarja is a pretty nice price. Yeah, Philly's 25th in baseball. Hard hit contact against righties. Uh, makes yeah. me feel a little bit better. Um, and there's really just not a ton of options. That's, that's kind of the issue here. Uh, Samarja is the best of a bad situation, I think. Um, yeah. Especially on, like, he's a, I think he's a much better play on DK than he is on FanDuel just because of, you know, the close line. It's not like Samar is a, a good bet to pick up a win here. Um, so I would like him more as either, he could either be, like, God, I can't, I can't imagine going Samarja in any further down. So it would probably be like Samarja and Hendricks for me on DK would be like the my first shot if I wasn't doing a Strasburg line. Strasburg would be my priority. I just haven't dug into that yet. Hitters, yeah, I, though. Oh, go ahead. Yeah, go No, go ahead. Okay. I'm, I was I'm just going to say, hitters, I like both sides of this. Um, particularly the Giants side from a hitting perspective. Uh, Zach Eflin's really bad. Uh, McCutcheon made the spotlight hitters today. He made it yesterday as well. And I think that Buster Posey could have just as easily done that. Uh, Eflin just gets absolutely rocked against righties. You know, he gets clobbered against lefties too, but uh, he's got like a, I want to say like a 4.8 XFIP or 4.9 XFIP against righties in his career. Not good. Um, and then the the one thing that I saw, uh, Citizens Bank Park has been, has the highest park factor for home runs uh, for right-handed hitters. Even higher than cores. So, Interesting. Yeah, I, I didn't see that one coming at all. And it's been steady. Like, it's the last couple of years have been, you know, 
either first or second over uh, for the home run rate for righties. So if that's the case, that combination of Eflin being bad, you know, McCutcheon, Posey, even Longoria to an extent, I can see any one of those guys going yard. But I prioritize McCutcheon. I think his price is pretty nice on DK. Same sort of scenario for Posey, too. If you need a catcher, you're getting that uh, potential right-handed power against a pitcher that's just not very good. So I really like the top five of the Giants as a stack. Yeah, no, I'm I'm certainly with you there. Um, McCutcheon is actually the guy I had written down. So I don't love the Giants stack, but maybe you're talking me into it a little bit here. Um, F- Eflin's not a great pitcher, as you said. He just doesn't really do anything all that well. Certainly can't miss bats. Um, and that's kind of the Giants' biggest problem early in the season. Like, their hard contact numbers are very, very good. McCutcheon especially, especially over 50% against righties. And then 27% line drive percentage for him against righties as well. So he's squaring up the ball really well. Uh, Buster Posey can hit righties. Uh, Brandon Belt's not my favorite guy to play, but if you're stacking the Giants, who I think will be pretty low-owned, then... He makes sense in between Posey and McCutcheon and Longoria. So I could get to a four-man giant stack, I guess, now that I'm talking it out a little bit. There you go. Talking you right into it. Talking you into yeah. bad decisions. <laughs> I, I love McCutcheon. I've done that in my life. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. You know, McCutcheon, pretty big pull hitter uh, against righties. Eflin gives up pretty solid amount of you know, pull contact to righties. I really think one of those, either McCutcheon or Posey, like, I wish I could take buy stock in them hitting a home run today because I think one of them's going to do it. I know that's a yeah. really ridiculous take, but I honestly feel like it's going to be a pretty nice spot for them. Uh, do you have anything on Eflin uh, holding runners by any chance? Um, he looks like average okay. about. I have him just... On a quick search, I there's like this factor on Razball that I use. Okay. Uh, he looks about average. Okay. Yeah. Just checking. So I was gonna say like, I like Blanco 2400 on Fanduel, 2700 on DK as a leadoff option. And if they, uh, if Eflin was like particularly bad at holding runners, I would like that a little bit more. It's not like Blanco's got some sort of, you know, great stick on him. Yeah. Um, so I was just kind of hoping that he was just bad at that, too. Uh, I'm cool with the Philly side of the stack, too, if, you, if you're not really keen on Samarja. Uh, you know, Hernandez, Hoskins, Herrera, uh, Carlos Santana. I mean, I'm yes. all there, I guess, but, like, it's just the Phillies are just fine. They're a team that I'll have a, a low amount of exposure to, but not a complete zero. I like, yeah, Hernandez, Hoskins, and then Carlos Santana. And they're kind of spread out, so more as one-off options. Um, but if I'm playing the, the lefty, Santana and Hernandez, probably want to get in Herrera and Reese Hoskins if you're doing a stack. So, yeah. Especially if Samarja's going to be chalky. One of these guys is going to emerge in the mid-tier as probably pretty chalky, and it could be Samarja just because his matchup's probably the best. So... Agreed. If you want to play Strasburg and play one of these super cheap guys, um, maybe getting a Phillies bat in isn't the worst idea for a leverage play as well. I think Hoskins' price is down quite a bit on FanDuel. I want to check that out quick. Um, he's only at 4000 which feels like it's way lower than it's been lately. Yeah. Uh, where are you hiding, Hoskins? Oop. Top of the list. Yeah, so he was 4,900 at the end of April, and he he was 3,800 yesterday. He's back up to 4,000 today, but he had been grading out pretty poorly uh, when he was up in that 4,800 range, and I saw that he was a uh, pretty bright green for me here. Now that I know uh, how good righty power is in Citizens Bank Park, uh, makes me a little bit more interested in Hoskins here. For yeah, me, this is just uh, hitters on both sides with like the a very you know, I'll probably be like around the field on Samarja. I think that's fair. I, he's not a guy I want to go in a hundred percent on, but uh, if if I'm making one lineup, he's either on it or he's not. So he's either zero or hundred. So 
I don't know if I'm going to put my fate in Jeff Samarja. I don't think many people want to do that. Yeah. <laughs> you good here? Yep. Alrighty. Reds and Mets. Uh, Reds, 4.7 run implied total. Mets, 4.7. Another 50-50 game. Homer Bailey going for Cincinnati. P.J. Conlon going for the Mets. Uh, Conlon not on FanDuel. He is on DK. To me, neither of these guys are playable. Uh, you seen anything different? No, I I mean, Conlon, he wasn't even good in AAA. Like, <laughs> That's great. One and two with a 6.75 ERA and five starts. Um, so still small sample. But now you're getting called up to the majors, struggling in AAA. Like, it, if Cincinnati was a better hitting team, and they have two guys that I love once again, it's the same guys that we always target against lefties, Suarez and Duvall. If they had better hitters around them, I would just go all in on this red stack. Yeah. Um, like, it's a great park, and this guy's making his debut after struggling. I don't, I don't know what else to say. Uh, can you stack it up here? I can't see myself playing Peraza for 4,300. Uh, I'd play Votto for 55, even lefty-lefty against this guy. But Whew. that's about it. Um, I think that you can stack it up here. They're so cheap on FanDuel. Like Blandino, 2,500. Duvall's only 3,000. Um, I, I think Mezzarocco looks pretty nice at 3,100 on DraftKings if you need a catcher. Uh, I think their prices are better on FanDuel. I don't have a problem stacking it up. Um, I would expect them to be decent. They don't have the best number. Like, their hard hit uh, percentage versus righties, 17th. They do have uh, the Reds' home run park factor for righties is 106, which is fourth in baseball last year. Um, so that's going well for them, I guess. Yeah. Uh, I'd be fine with a red stack. I'm going to have a decent amount of it. I'd guess they're probably like my fourth most owned stack when all is said and done. Maybe fourth or fifth, somewhere in that area. They didn't make the spotlight stacks list, uh, but they're they're like right on the edge of it. And the problem really is just they don't, you know, like it's Peraza and Blandino at the top. If they could flip those two guys into somebody with a little bit more pop, it would be a little bit more interesting. Do you have Blandino leading off? I'm hitting second. Okay. If he's hitting second, I think that's fine, too. Uh, he's not in my projected lineup, but I don't know Let me what. Take a look. Yeah. So if he's in there, I don't know what his price is on DK because I, I don't see him in the lineup here, but I'm sure he's not super expensive. He's 2900 but I'm seeing, I'm seeing Peraza in the two-hole with Winker in one. Okay. Well... If Blandino somehow gets in that lineup, then he makes that stack a little bit more affordable and better. <laughs> Just another righty bat in there. Yeah, I can't imagine why they would want Jesse Winker to hit leadoff lefty-lefty here. Yeah. So. It, yeah, I, I don't know. We'll he should he should be in the lineup. Blandino should. And that'll be a pretty chalky option, I think, for second base. Yeah, especially with the dual eligibility, too. Mm -hmm. You can make a lot of stuff work and when you have those... Those sorts of splits. Yep. Let me check again. Yeah, yeah. This one has Blandino, so I'm gonna err on the side of the extra righty bat. But it's the Reds, so they'll probably go lefty, lefty, lefty at the top or something. <laughs> probably. Yeah, they're gonna be a cheap option. Um, so if you need to have like Strasburg plus bats, the Reds could probably go pretty well with that. Um, you just yeah. not. You don't really need to spend a ton to do that uh, what do you think of the Mets side of it I like the Mets too so Homer Bailey one of the best guys in the league to target against over the last few years just getting lit up by righties so Cespedes is hitting the ball a lot better he's got a questionable tag next to him though so yeah I don't know what's really going on with him I do I was actually watching the game when he went out <laughs> uh, so what something how did he... in like his quad or hip area he got okay. on first and then just started like punching himself in the hip, which was weird. And then uh, whoever was hitting after him uh, hit a ball into the outfield. Cespedes went first to third, ran it out absolutely perfectly, didn't come up lame or anything, got on the third, and then you could see that he was like in some pretty visible discomfort. They took him out immediately. 
So that was yesterday, I'm assuming, then? Yeah. Okay, so I missed that. Um, if he's the in the lineup... The reason I know that is because I had the Mets game on, because I had a ton of yeah. uh, Syndergaard. <laughs> if he's in the lineup, then I like him. Um, I mean, they're not going to mess with him with a quad injury. I don't think he's in the lineup today. Okay. If not, you still can play really all the top five in the Mets lineup. So I love playing as Drupal Cabrera. Conforto is 3400 on DK. That just seems like a misprice. Yeah. Um, same with Jay Bruce, even though Bruce hasn't been hitting the ball that well this year. Uh, like his hard contact and average exit velocity isn't that far up. But he's batting fourth or third against Homer Bailey. And then I'd even go Todd Frazier for 34. Uh, I'm sorry, 4K on DK. Um, over 40% hard contact for him this year against righties, which I was pretty surprised to see. Yeah, I, I like the I like the Mets a lot. Um, you know, I think Brandon Nimmo, if he's hitting leadoff, 2700 on FanDuel is a really nice price, 3400 on DK. As part of a stack, that works really well for me. Bruce and Conforto obviously have the opportunity to go yard as lefties against Homer Bailey. Mm-hmm. Um I always like Asdrubal Cabrera, although he's kind of expensive on FanDuel now. 4000 I can still picture that, like, that first week or two where we were talking and he was priced in, like, the like, 2500 He's like 20, or Yeah, stupid. he was, like, 25 <laughs> yeah. yeah, it was it's ridiculous. Absolutely. It's like, he's still not even a bad play at 4000 but it was a ridiculous price point to start the season. Mm-hmm. God, I hate cheering for the Mets. Um, <laughs> even, like, Adrian Gonzalez, if he's hitting sixth on FanDuel, 2500 a nice value bat um i don't have any problem having either side of this game from a bat's perspective yeah neither do i uh like just not i can't make a case for any of these pitchers even at these prices it's just like the pitching is that bad where there's probably one guy here that's going to get a bunch of ownership but it's not going to be bailey or conlin for me no not at all um trying to think of if there's anything else that I wanted to touch on here. Yeah, I just, Conforto is definitely, I would say, the play of the of this game. 3,100 yeah. fan duel, 3,400 DK. Four hole against Homer Bailey, I'll take it. Yeah, he's going to put the ball in play, or he should. And he's probably going to hit it really hard. So, just way too cheap. Completely agree. Let's move on. Rangers and Tigers. That's not at all where I'm supposed to type that in. God. Mondays, guys. Mondays. Uh, Rangers, 4.7 run implied total. Tigers, 4.8. It's 52% chance to win for the Tigers. Matt Moore going for Texas. Uh, Michael Fulmer going for Detroit. Uh, I don't want Fulmer in any way, shape, or form. And uh, I definitely don't want Matt Moore. So this is another game where I don't want any of the pitching and uh i definitely want a ton of the hitting yeah i like the hitting um of course it's a great park uh fulmer's been outside of that one game with the huge swinging strike rate and based on everything else he's done i'm just kind of throwing that out he's a guy that he he's pretty good at creating soft contact and stuff like that so he's someone i have respect for in that sense um, the Rangers are, they have the third highest K percentage against righties. They're definitely a team you can pick on, but I don't think I really want to do it with Fulmer, who's not a huge strikeout guy. He's more of a uh, get you to ground out kind of guy or just create um, n- not hard contact. So I don't know. I don't think it's that great of a matchup against the Rangers. Um, I do like Mazzara and Gallo a ton, but I don't really want to stack against Fulmer either. And then Matt Moore is just, he's getting blasted by both sides. Uh, we didn't uh, get a chance to talk about this. I, I'm sorry to interject. Um, speaking of guys that normally get blasted, uh, I shouted you out yesterday morning in the, in my, when I recorded for the Sunday slate, because um, James Shields was going and I expected him to get, you know, absolutely slaughtered yesterday. Did you see what he did yesterday? Didn't he have like a, uh, Perfect game through five or something. He he was going real well <laughs> early. <laughs> Finished six and two thirds, two hits, but he gave those up relatively late. Um, yeah. We had somebody tweet to us like, you know, is, is James Shields going to be the first guy that has a perf- or that throws a no hitter and doesn't have any ownership? 
<laughs> like no one, I, like I couldn't find him anywhere in most of the tournaments. He was nowhere to be found. But just talking about guys that we expect to get absolutely shelled. That's baseball for you. Matt yeah. Moore is absolutely atrocious, as is James Shields. And Shields was out rolling no-nos yesterday like it was nothing. Yeah, I mean, it's going to happen. Even these guys with awful numbers are going to pitch six scoreless innings every once in a while. And that doesn't mean you shouldn't stack against them the next time. It just means they probably had a they had their stuff working and they were doing what they do well. And um, sometimes the hitters just fall right into their traps, like against Martin Perez, where they're just grounding out to short 10 times in a row. Yep. Um, that's part of MLB DFS. That's why you play, you don't just play one time. You continue to stack against these guys because they're going to hit at some point. They're going to blow up. And Moore is definitely not immune to a blow up. He just can't strike out anyone. And there's, you know, the Tigers lineup isn't very powerful, but there are some guys that can hit for power, like Cassianos, Candelario. I like Jacoby Jones for 3,400. And then John Hicks and James McCann, too. Um, so I like a Tiger stack here. Do you? Uh, love it. Um, yeah. They're not, they don't have the highest upside of a stack because they don't really have that same sort of power that you'd be looking for. 40 they're third in hard contact versus lefties, mm -hmm. but their home run per fly ball rate is 6.9%, which I believe is second worst, but it might be third. I'm trying to look at this before it filters itself. So like they're making a lot of con like really aggressive contact yeah. in play, but no one's going yard for them. So I like them dollar for dollar. Like they're, they're they're a really nice value stack. They'd go really well with Strasburg. Um, whether it's I mean basically anybody, anybody. I'll take anybody at all in the stack, one to eight. But you got to know what you're getting with that. You definitely want Castellanos in it, uh, and I would say V Mart and Candelario would be like the priority three. Because the rest of the guys just don't have any pop. Hicks, McCann, Jacoby Jones, Iglesias, Martin all project with sub 400 slugging percentages in steamer. So, you know, you just don't have to pay any money to get these guys. Martin's 3,000, Vmart 2,600, Hicks 2,600, McCann 2,400. All these guys are super low priced on FanDuel. Nobody over 4,000. And they're, they're relatively cheap on DK too. Um, I'm gonna have a bunch of tigers. They'll be, they'll be like the stack that goes with everything for me. Yeah, um, I, I mean they're a little bit tougher to fit in on DK, with a bunch, of, uh, a few guys over 4K. Um, so you might not be able to do the full stack with Strasburg, unless you're really paying down at your other spots. But um, I love Cassianos and Jacoby Jones, Vmart with no. Miguel Cabrera in the lineup makes that first base decision a little bit easier. You don't have to choose between the two of them. So, while I don't love V-Mart as a hitter anymore, um, he is 3,200 in a stack that I do like a lot. So, um, it's either him or John Hicks, really. Uh, Hicks, you can play at first base as well. Yeah. I'm with you. Uh, Tigers look really great. Most of that is because of Matt Moore being really bad. Um <laughs> Uh, again, this is another game that of of the first three. I like hitters on both sides because I'm fine with Chu, Profar, Mazzara, Gallo. I, you know, I won't have a ton of Rangers. They'll be like the seventh most owned stack I have, or something along those lines. But Gallo only 3,500. I think that's a nice spot. Uh, 2,700 on Fanduel for Profar if you need a shortstop. I think that's a pretty nice value. Um, I like Mazzara just kind of in general. So. I'll have way more Tigers than I do Rangers, probably like two to one. But I just I like the hitting here. Lots of bad pitching out there today. Yeah. It's gonna be a lot of like two one, two nothing, three one type games, and everybody's gonna be like, eh, "Why don't you talk about those pitchers more?" Yeah. I can that was like what? Coming. There was one day last week where we talked about like one of these pitchers is gonna score twenty two points or something, and like six of them did. Like, all the low price guys got there, except for, like, the couple I, I played. I can't remember who it was, but he, he got rocked. And uh, so I just chose wrong. It was literally the one guy that didn't reach value. That's uh, baseball for you. Yeah, it is. Ugh. 
Alright, next game. Oop, wrong one. Cubs and Marlins. Cubs, 4.9 run implied total. Marlins, 3.1. I've got the total in at 8 runs right now. Uh, this game's in Chicago, so as of me start or as of us starting this show uh, there wasn't a total i'm going to double check it quick just so we don't talk about all the wrong shit for the entire time yeah still no total so i've got it in at eight anything higher than this makes the cubs even more appealing as a stack anything lower which would really surprise me makes me like hendrix even more right now it's in a perfect middle ground where cubs are 69 percent likely to win kyle hendrix going for Chicago, Harlan Garcia going for Miami. I love Hendricks on FanDuel, um, where the win is a little bit more important. I'm going to end up having Hendricks in, he'll be my second most owned pitcher. Uh, I think he's fine on DK as well. Not as appealing, but the $4,000 price gap from Hendricks to Strasburg is kind of crazy. Uh, there's nobody else in between. Um, so Hendricks is, I think, going to get a lot of ownership just because of the low implied total for the Marlins. Unless this game's line goes up to like 9.5 or something crazy uh, and makes Hendricks look a little bit less appealing, I'm, I'm going to end up with a ton of him. I mean, I, I can't even argue against him on DK at, at 9,600. He could get 18 to 20 DK points and... You can make that up as long as Strasburg doesn't go for 40 or something on, you know, against San Diego. Like, you're not going to be able to fit in Hendricks and Strasburg, but, uh, I mean, you could, but then you're leaving yourself really thin for bats. Uh, so you kind of have to choose one or the other. And, I, I mean, I want Strasburg if I can get him at all. So Hendricks does make sense. The Marlins are a team that just keep knocking pitchers out early and, racking up the pitch count and all that so i don't expect like a huge game out of hendrix i never really do but i also i'm not scared of any of the hitters really um so hendrix makes sense uh you're gonna get a different lineup and he's a huge favorite so pretty good chance for the win here too um i mean i'm not excited about even considering kyle hendrix for 9600 but you kind of have to on this slate if you're not going strasburg yeah, we've talked about it before. Marlins versus righties, uh, 29th in baseball in hard contact. You know, something I'm a little bit interested in, that's for sure. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not looking at anything from the Marlins, whether that's Bats or Garcia. Uh, the Cubs are my favorite stack of the day. Uh, Bryant, spotlight hitter. I think he's the best hitter on the board uh, for everything tonight. You know, Mash is lefties. Garcia not great against righties. You really can't get a better scenario here. He's only 4200 on FanDuel, which is just a bonkers price. Uh, I'll, I'll have, like, a real overwhelming amount of Chris Bryant tonight. Yeah, I, I love Chris Bryant. He's one of my favorite hitters on the slate, too. He's 5300 on DK. Um, not far behind him, though, is Wilson Contreras for 4100 He's probably my favorite catcher on the slate. and It's, it's not really that close. Um, yeah, I'm with you there. I, I wish Ian Happ was hitting higher up in the lineup. It looks like he's fixed a little bit of his problems against lefties this year. Last year, it was, he had huge splits against righties and lefties. I never played him against a lefty, but this year it looks like he's figured it out a little bit. So if he's like somehow 6th or 7th, I think he's a really contrarian play if you're stacking the Cubs. Um, but yeah, like Harlan Garcia, not really scared of him at all. Uh, huge strikeout splits, over 32% strikeout percentage against lefties, 15% uh, against righties. And now he's going into Wrigley Field against all these righties with power. Um, I definitely get the Cubs stack. I like it a lot. They're just really expensive on DK. Yeah, uh, Cubs, or Wrigley, fifth highest right-handed park factor for home runs last year. So another data point for... Guys like Baez, Bryant, mm -hmm. Contreras. Um, yeah, yeah. I just I'm gonna like they're they're very clearly my number one stack. They're the number one stack in spotlight stacks. Um, I'll have basically every combination of one through six that I can put together, plus whatever goes with them, whether that's 
Strasburg or uh, you know on FanDuel if it if I do have Hendricks it'll be three Cubs and uh, I won't be mad at all about having Baez, Bryant, Wilson Contreras, and Kyle Hendricks to go with four other guys and a one-off. Um, that'll be like the most popular thing that I have, and I'm <laughs> super okay with it. <laughs> yeah, I, everything from the Cubs side lines up for me. Um, no issue with really any of these hitters. Um, no issue with Hendricks. I like him better on FanDuel if you're playing over there. So, but on DK, you can still make a case for it. Um, I don't think he's going to match Strasburg, but he could get pretty close as long as Strasburg doesn't go nuts, like like I said earlier. Yeah, and when I ran my preliminary crunch for FanDuel, uh, I got zero Marlins. So, I mean, I mean that literally, <laughs> zero. So, when I say that I'm not looking at the Marlins, I truly mean that. So, when they go nuts tonight, feel free to go on Twitter and call me an ass. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, anything else you want to touch on for this one? I think that's it. All right. Cardinals and Twins. Uh, Cardinals, 4.6 run implied total. Twins, 3.9. 57% chance to win for the Cardinals. It's John Gant, uh, not to be confused with Ron Gant, uh, going for St. Louis. Fernando Romero going for Minnesota. Uh, not looking at Romero at all, but I think Gant is going to be one of those ridiculously low-priced plays that become very popular today. Whether that's on FanDuel, where he won't be like super popular, just since you're only playing one pitcher, uh, you don't really need to pay down all that much with any frequency. But I think Gant is going to be very popular on DraftKings as a second starter, particularly as a, a handcuff to Strasburg. Um, what are you thinking for Gant? Yeah, Gant, he's probably going to be pretty popular, like you said. Just looking at some of his numbers this year, though, this is not the kind of chalk pitcher I really want to play. 6.6 Ks per nine this year, 17.7% K percentage. Um, if he, like, and he may have better strikeout stuff, uh, like, from previous years or whatever, but um, this Twins lineup doesn't really strike out that much against righties. Bunch of left handed bats in here. Um, but Gantt is super cheap. You really just need, like, double digits. Um, and then Strasburg to have a really good game if you're going with that pairing. So I get it. Um, I don't think Gantt's going to go off. It's just whether or not he can survive here against the Twins. And if he's going to be super chalky, then I'm probably going to go the other route and play some Twins bats against him, like Kepler and Rosario and even Joe Maurer. So I don't know. Where, where are you at? Do you like? Do you want a chalky John Gantt? Probably. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I don't know. Like, he came up a lot in my first crunch. Um, Cardinals ballpark is fifth worst to right-handed hitters uh, for power last year. So, you know, it's m less than average for lefty power. I think he's coming in in a good spot. Twins implied total of 3.9. Nothing to write home about. Uh, oh, my only concern would just be Twins are ninth in hard contact versus righties. That's pretty solid. Um, you know, they've got some pop, or at least a little bit of it, from the left side. Kepler, Rosario, Logan Morrison. Um, yeah, I would probably, like, at 4,200, it's not going to take a lot from Gant. He's... He's gone deep enough into games in AAA that it's not a thing where I expect him to only throw four innings. Like, he, he went six solid uh, quite a few times in AAA. So I'm not too worried about, like, the distance he goes into the game. Uh, the Vegas line seems to think that he could have some success. So if that line were a little bit tighter, I'd be a little bit more dubious of him. But for 4,200 on DK... I think I'd be more likely to have like, uh, it, it might be you might be saving too much salary if you did like Hendricks and Gant because I think Strasburg and Gant is going to be the overwhelming popular combo. So I actually think that Gant is like the more interesting play to get with someone like Hendricks, but you might have too much salary left over after that. We'll have to take a look at it. Yeah, I mean you could like if Gant gets 15 points on DK and 
both Strasburg and Hendricks have good games, you, like you're buried if you don't have Gant because um, it's going to be super chalky, I'm assuming, unless we're just missing something on Gant or he has some crazy low pitch count or something, which I don't think he will. Um, like he, he definitely, definitely makes sense. I just hate when these these guys come up and they're chalk in their first start of the season or whatever. And um, like the Twins aren't that great of a matchup. They hit the ball hard against righties. They don't strike out that much. True. Um, it's just like if he was like fifty seven hundred or six k or something, there I wouldn't even really consider Gant here because I don't think he's going to strike out that many guys, but. For 4,200, with pitching being the way it is, it's hard not to consider him. He'll probably be written up in the spotlight pitchers just because of the lack of options. Yeah. In the 100 lines that I ran on DK, I got one Hendricks and Gant. Uh, it's got Contreras, Chris Bryant, and Al Mora as uh, the three Cubs that go with him. Guriel, Altuve, Correa, and Springer from the Astros, and then Castellanos <laughs> as the, yeah. the one-off. So, like... That's a crazy hitting lineup. And yeah. I don't have a huge problem with Hendricks and Gant. So I don't think Hendricks and Gant would be a a chalky pairing. No. Um, which allows you to get to some really crazy bats if you want to. So that would be the direction I think that I would want to at least have a couple lines of to be different. Because uh, that Strasburg Gant one is going to be pretty popular. For sure. Yeah. No, I like that. Like, if you just want to get different, but still play the chalk 4K pitcher, and, um, you know, then you get to pay up for all these sick bats, like Chris Bryan, uh, all those Astros lefties and stuff like that. So I get the Gantt play. I'm not saying I'm not even going to do it, because I may, I may play him. I'm just really worried about a chalk 4K pitcher against the Twins, sure. who I have some respect for. Yeah, I'm with you there. Um, any, are you looking at the bats, really? Uh, I don't really have much interest in anything here. Uh, Carpenter looks pretty good. Um, otherwise, the Cardinals are just sort of, like, unsexy. One, two, three, four is fine. I'd have that in a couple lines, but I'm not really stacking this game up from a hitting perspective. Um, so it's Fernando Romero. Uh, this guy had a pretty good start in his first outing. Uh, he went five and two thirds, five Ks, no earned runs, 11.3% swinging strike rate. So encouraging stuff out of him. Um, but the Cardinals just have so many good bats that I don't want to target against, even righty righty. Um, Jose Martinez is still super cheap. He's barreling up, it seems like, two balls every night and flying out, uh, at least when I play him, it seems like. So 3400 for him. I like that a lot. Ozuna is super cheap. Fowler is under 4K. The only guy that's expensive here on DK is Tommy Pham. But I could get to a Cardinals stack pretty easily here, even with some expensive pitching. So I like the Cardinals, actually. I don't expect them to be terribly highly owned, so it wouldn't take much to go over the field on the Cardinals. Yeah, yeah I, I like them a lot. Romero did get hit pretty hard by righties when they made contact. Obviously, very, very small sample, but... Um, take that for what it's worth. Cardinals do have the third highest home run per fly ball rate in baseball against righties right now, so maybe. Yeah, they're, they've they got some power for sure. That's all I've got here. You ready to move on? Yep. Alrighty. A's and Astros. A's four run implied total. Astros 4.5 a 56% chance to win for the Astros. Brett Anderson going for Oakland. Dallas Keuchel going for Houston. Um, Anderson, not a guy I want at all. Doesn't miss enough bats. Doesn't really miss any bats if we're being honest. Uh, Keuchel is in a spot where on FanDuel I would just rather pay $900 less and take Hendricks. And on DK I think you can make a case for him and it's fine. Um... He's just like he's just there for me today. I'm a little nervous of guys like, you know, Chris Davis or Matt Chapman. Uh, I don't really like the top of the order uh, against Keuchel, so I don't want any A's bats. 
And I don't even really want a ton of Keiko. The only thing that I want here is just a bundle of Astros. Um, yeah, let me push back on that on Anderson quick. So he he was really good in his first start, and it was against the Mariners. Um, he had thirteen point eight percent swinging strike rate. He went six and a third, four Ks, um, and only eighty pitches. So that was actually really encouraging. It's just one start; you can't just take that to the bank. Um, but I really wish he was facing the Astros and priced at sixty three hundred, or he wasn't facing the Astros and was priced at sixty three hundred because uh, I'd probably have some interest in him. I I don't think I can do it against the Astros, even though they are top 10 um, in the MLB in K percentage against lefties. There's just so many good bats, like yeah. one to nine, really. Well, not Marisnik. I don't, I think he's awful. At least uh, he missed, he waves and misses more than just about anyone. Um, not good. Yeah. So, like, I don't think I can do it with Anderson, even though, like, Seattle is really tough to miss bats against, and he did it pretty well in only 80 pitches. So I don't think I want to go full-on Houston stack. I do like Correa and Springer and Altuve just in general and against the lefty for sure. And then Yuli Guriel is 3,200, but I, I won't get to a full stack against Anderson. And then Keuchel's going to see probably eight righties here. Yeah, It's a decent strikeout matchup. But that's not really his mo. He's more about getting ground balls and creating soft contact. And the A's hit lefties, I believe, top three hardest in the MLB this year. Number one. Are they number one? There were, I think, there were two last night when I checked. So I just wanted to say top three uh, before anything refreshed. <laughs> number one. But, I'm fan graphs right now. Number one. Okay. So you said you don't like any bats, right? In the A's. No, I don't like any bats on the A's. Uh, Semyon will probably pop up as like a one-off shortstop for stacks that don't yeah. have a decent shortstop, but that's about it for me. Yeah, so I I mean, Semyon, Lowry, and Matt Chapman are batting 1, 3, and 5, it looks like. So I can't really get to an A stack, but I like those guys all as one-offs, especially Chapman for 3,700. I just think he has a pretty good chance to hit a home run, and he's probably going to be like under 5% owned. So... This is kind of an avoid game for me, outside of maybe a Houston bat or two, maybe an Oakland bat or two, but not really liking what I'm seeing out of the pitchers here, just for matchup and and upside reasons. I'm going to have a bundle of Astros. Springer, Altuve, Correa, Gurriel, Bregman, that one through five, uh, I'm going to rotate that through in all sorts of ways, um, at least on FanDuel. Gurriel, only 3,000. I just like I can't I can't wrap my head around that. Springer made spotlight hitters this morning. 4400 on FanDuel leading off against a lefty. You know, he just absolutely mashes lefty pitching. Um I can't imagine not having Springer in like an overwhelming majority of my lineups. Just being able to get somebody with that sort of pop against lefties in the leadoff spot. Uh I'll take my chances on him getting extra plate appearances and that's really all that I'm looking for there. No, I get it. I mean, they're they're begging you to play Uriel on both sides, really. Yeah. So, like, if you can get to a, an Astro stack, then yeah. If you got a bunch of lineups to play with, like, I don't think Anderson is some guy that's gonna just go and mow him down in seven innings. But uh, I think he can pitch okay here. I think so. Sure. Yeah. The, I mean, the Astros implied total of four point five is reasonable. Like, it's not anything. There are one, two, three, four, five. Five, six other games higher than that, or six other teams higher than that. So uh, there is some respect for, for Anderson in the Vegas line right now. Uh, I just, to be able to get the righty-lefty matchup and get part of your stack being Altuve at second, Correa at short, Bregman at third, and then you're getting, like, the bargain of Guriel at first. Mm-hmm. To me, 4,400 for Springer in a leadoff spot against a lefty is an absolute bargain. So to hit all of those main positions and then get value at the, like the more power spots, uh, I think the Astros line up really nicely here. 
if the Cubs line or if the Cubs total is somehow like shockingly lower than I have it, um, the Astros would probably move into my first spot for stacks. But just because of uh, the implied total in Chicago and where it could potentially go, the Astros will probably be my second most owned stack. And I'll probably have a lot of Cubs Astros combinations with whatever pitcher I can get. That's fair. Yeah, I don't know. I'm irrational about the Astros. Well, I guess not irrational. They're obviously fucking no, awesome. No, I, I, yeah, <laughs> I love playing the Astros, too, I, especially against the lefty. So um, I, I get it for sure. Yeah. Yeah, I guess I'm not irrational at all considering they're, you know, the best team in baseball, <laughs> so yeah. to speak. Yeah. Defending champs. Um, what's their record this year? 21 and 15. Yeah. Alrighty, last game. Padres and Nats. Uh, Padres, 3.1 run implied total. Nats, 3.9. 60% chance to win for the Nats. It's Tyson Ross going for San Diego. Strasburg going for Washington. Uh, Strasburg's going to be the highest owned pitcher on the day. I'd be shocked if it's anybody else. Doesn't matter the site. And he should be. Uh, Padres can run out as many lefties as they want to, and it appears that they're trying to do that, but they're not very good. Um, I'll have no Padres from a hitting perspective, you know, outside of maybe one stack to just offset in case Strasburg goes crazy bad. But I don't want any Padres. Their hitters are terrible, and I'll have a ton of Strasburg because... Well, who the hell else are you going to roster? <laughs> yeah. Um, so Stra- Strasburg, yeah, he's going to be the overwhelming chalk. He's got the safest strikeout matchup, like the safest route to like 20 plus DK points, I would say. Yeah. Um, like it's, I mean, pretty likely he's going to be the highest scoring pitcher on the slate. Like, I don't know who can match him. Uh, not even like, Hendricks or Samarja, I don't think they can touch what Strasburg's upside is here, even with some of those lefties in the lineup. There's just a ton of things going for him. 13-6 is a really tough price on DraftKings, but Gant sort of opens that up, which I'm afraid that that pairing is going to be super, super chalky, and then I might try to get different with my lineup. Um, I don't want to target any Padres bats. Strasburg is an awesome play. Um, I mean, who? So, which Padre bat would you choose if you had to play one against him? Like just a one-off, leverage one-off. Last I'll game tell you of the who night. It's not, and it's not Travis Jankowski, who's got a slugging percentage from Steamer projected lower than his on-base percentage. <laughs> so no, and it's not yeah. as if it's like, oh, his on-base percentage is projected at 380 and his slugging is 379. No, it's 312 and 309. So yeah, it's not going to be Jankowski. Um, I mean, if I'm taking one bat here, it's probably, oh boy, I was going to say Cordero, but I don't want to pay 3,200 for an outfielder who probably more likely to go over four than anything else. Probably be Hosmer, but yeah, I wouldn't be so, like stoked about it. Yeah. Those were the two I was thinking about, but it'd be Cordero for me on DK 3,500 outfield spot. And you just hope that he can drive in a couple runs or hit a home run or something. And it's going to be a really good leverage play if you can, if you're making a bunch of lineups. I would get uh, some Padres one offs in just because if you don't have Strasburg, um, you're going to be one of the few that doesn't. So he's got to get hit, or I mean, you can't really bank on him getting injured or something. So he's got to get taken out of the game by something. And you want to have that bat in your lineup that does damage against him if he doesn't have a great outing. Uh, Cubs line is out. I had it in at 8. It's opening at 7.5. So I like really? Hendricks even more, and I still love the Cubs from a hitting perspective. That is that is pretty low. Yeah. Um, I wonder why. The weather's, I mean, 60 degrees, it's not bad. No, not at all. Uh, it's. I think they're just... I think they're giving a little bit more respect to Garcia than I am, and I think Hendricks is just kind of good. Yeah. Uh, That's so fair. That is going to make me like the Astros bats a little bit more, 
but I'll still have the Cubs as one of my top stacks. Um, and then Hendricks is going to rival Strasburg for me if that stays at seven and a half on FanDuel. Um, really? Yeah. Not from like a, the, it's just the price gap. Yeah, yeah twenty one hundred dollars. I, I mean, that's I could really get unique with my bats then. Uh, so Hendricks will be owned quite a bit. Sorry, I just wanted to pop in because I just saw that pop up here. No, it's perfect. Yeah. And there's not outside of Strasburg, I don't see really much to talk about in Padres Nats. I don't really have any interest in anything from the Nationals, you know. And when I say that, just assume that I still want Harper. Just like yeah. in general, moving forward for this stuff, he's fine. You can always use Bryce Harper. Uh, uh, you know, I don't think it's a great spot. I'll have very low ownership for Harper, but like, he doesn't have things called bad matchups. <laughs> no, he's this guy is unconscious. Like he, there was something going around about how he's like not a superstar. People were surprised. Older guys, God. older men in the media uh, that don't consider him a superstar. It's just, it's ridiculous. He's one of the best players in the MLB. Um, so now, all right, getting back to DFS. Yeah. Uh, so Tyson Ross going for the Padres. I have to give it up to this guy a little bit. He he was a guy I was just stacking against him every outing just because he couldn't miss any bats. He can't hold anyone. Uh, but now he's up to a 10.3% swing strike rate. He's 45th in the MLB, which is upper third uh, in whisper swing. And so I don't really know what to do with him in general. But tonight... He still can't hold on runners. And the Nationals have the, I believe, the most or the second most stolen bases against right-handed pitching this year. So a lot of that has to do with Trey Turner. Um, Bryce Harper can steal, even though he doesn't really. Uh, Michael Taylor for 3,600, I love. If he can get on base, I'm guessing he's going to steal a base. Um, so I, I actually love a Nats stack, even though I do respect what Tyson Ross has done. And the Nats, if they're going to go under-owned here, um, you could get two, three, four stolen bases out of a four or five man stack. So that's really attractive to me. Sure. Um, you get Bryce Harper in there and you're probably gonna have to get away from Strasburg if you want to do it on DK with Harper and Turner being so expensive. But, um, I think I'm willing to do that. I, I'd really like the Nats tonight, even in a bad park. Interesting. I was just going to say, uh, Tyson Ross for his career against righties. 3.37 xFIP. Yeah, he's That's really low. I mean, it, it's it's under four for lefties too. Uh, yeah, he, he gets it done somehow. Doesn't give up a lot of home runs. No, I I mean I don't think the home runs aren't really what's going to be attractive to me in this matchup. Outside of Adams and Harper, who are two guys that could certainly take him deep, um, it's really the stolen bases and just driving in runs and hitting with players in favorable spots. If they can get on. If Trey Turner gets on, he's stealing twice. Uh, like I, I don't see how Turner doesn't get a stolen base if he gets on base against Tyson Ross. It's just so such a safe play, I think. So I do like the Nats stack. Um, I'm hoping Ross doesn't screw me once again. Yeah, I think you said this before, but Nats the most stolen bases against righties. They're the most. Yeah. yeah. I knew they were first or second with the White Sox up there. Yep, White Sox are second. And it's the Nats and White Sox and then a gigantic gap mm -hmm. to everybody else. So, um, yep. Yeah, uh, I won't have much of this game. Uh, barely any Nats, barely, or definitely no Padres. So we'll definitely be going uh, different directions. Yeah, that's fair. I mean, it's not a great park, so I get it if you want to just fade it. But uh, I'm definitely going to be trying to get at least Turner and Harper in if I don't have Strasburg. Sure. So I ran this uh, before we started. Um, you could slightly nerf the Cubs and probably move up the Astros a little bit. Main stacks on DraftKings. Cubs, Astros, and the one that surprises me the most, but I guess it's a price thing, Giants. Yeah. Um, lots and lots of Strasburg and Gantt. No surprises there. Um, you can pretty much get whatever bats you want if you go Strasburg and Gantt. You can really get whatever you want if you go Gantt plus anything else. Uh, if you were looking at two pitchers, what would you start with? Would it be Strasburg and Gantt? Yeah, just, just see Strasburg and Gantt and just see 
like how many different types of stacks we can get in because if you can fit if you can make pretty much anything work that's going to be a really chalky pairing i'm sure gant is going to be talked up everywhere um not just by us so he's a good play for sure and he's going to be really chalky so if he blows up or doesn't do well or goes three and a third innings then you're going to be in a really good spot if you faded him yeah, and you can pretty much do whatever you want. Uh, Giants, Astros with all the Astros studs. Um, Cubs, Giants with Baez mm-hmm. and Bryant. Uh, Tigers, Astros you wow. know, with all the uh, Astros studs. You can you can really go any direction you want um, and not really struggle to get it to get it to fit. That that's pretty crazy. Yeah, it's gonna be. It's going to be crazy for um, for the Strasburg Gantt stacks. Like Guriel, Altuve, Bregman, Springer, obviously an exceptional <laughs> stack. And then Posey, McCutcheon, Blanco, Hanson. Like you know, I don't love having Hanson in the stack, but McCutcheon and Posey, I think, are both in really nice spots. I called a homer from one of the two uh, earlier. That would be a like I would love this line. And it'll probably put up, you know, sixty fantasy points when I'm when all is said and done because I said I like it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So if you can do, I mean, you can basically do anything you want with Strasburg and Gant, and that's why Gant will be as popular as uh, he will be today. Yeah. Um. Yeah. I don't know. That's that scares me. I just. I don't know where I'm going to be at, at seven Eastern. So. It makes me want to uh, be on the opposite side of that. For, well, for you, yeah, I would definitely get some twin stacks in there, or some twins bats at least. I just, I'm really scared of that matchup, and if it's going to be super chalky, then I'm even more scared of it and more likely to fade it. Yeah, like you can do Hendricks and Samarja with a Giants Astros stack and Blandino. Lots of Hendricks, Samarja with. Um, like basically whatever you want after that, and that's sort yeah. of that would be. I feel like a much lower owned combination. Yeah, you can definitely do the two mid tier guys, and your lineup's going to be different. So, yeah. man, tonight's going to be wild. Hope so. Uh, I don't have much to add from the Fanduel Crunch perspective. I've sort of touched on that already. It, it loves the Cubs. Um, it'll go down a little bit for that, but Strasburg's going to get a ton of ownership. Hendricks is going to get a ton of ownership, and then I'll have a smattering of Gant and Samarja. Um, it's just really hard to avoid Strasburg on FanDuel today. It's really easy to get to other stacks with Strasburg too. So, right. You know, if I can do Strasburg with the Cubs and the Giants or something, I'm certainly going to do that, and I can. I can get Baez and Bryant from the Cubs, which makes me happy. I can get McCutcheon, which makes me happy. Uh, that's going to be something I have a lot of. Yeah. I mean, it should be interesting. I hope the ownership isn't too concentrated on a few guys because then – well, actually, I, I kind of hope it is and guys that so I'm not on. But uh, we'll see. should be a pretty fun seven-game slate with all this uncertainty, if you like variants. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> hockey tonight, what do we got? Yeah, another two games. Um, Capitals, Penguins, Predators, Jets. The Caps and the Jets are trying to close out the series. And um, you'll see, once again, a lot of familiar names in the write-ups as the matchups. We kind of know how the matchups are going to go at this point. This is the sixth game of both series, so should be good there. I will have both articles out around 3 Eastern. And Osmo's rankings will be out for NHL. So make sure to check those out as well. There you go. Uh, NBA, two games. Uh, Boston and Cleveland both up 3-0. So they're both looking to, to close out their series as quick as possible. Uh, Celtics Sixers game starts at 6. I would guess that Chris and I will go live around 5.30 to take some basketball questions. And then we'll do baseball up until 7 or so. Um, projections and slam dunks and stuff will be out throughout the day. Uh, keep an eye out for spotlight hitters, pitchers, and stacks, uh, which will all be posted once you read this. Uh, I don't think we have anything else to plug. I think that's it for uh, uh, Monday. We're back. 
You still there? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> oh, I thought you were. I thought you were ending it. Uh, well, then we are ending it. Uh, best of luck, everybody. Like and subscribe. That's my phone. <laughs> Perfect way to end it. Uh, yeah. Best of luck, guys. We'll talk. Good to you luck, later. guys.